How's it going, people? Well, I'm doing pretty good. But I'm not done with Chapter 2 yet. Let's see if I can make some progress in that area. Okay. This prophet proceeds in the following chapters to predict, predict the same event. See Hosea 2D and add chapters. The account closes thus. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image and without an ephod and without a teraphim Afterward, shall the ch children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness. You're going to be afraid of his goodness? I'd be afraid of his bad side. Uh, in the latter days. Here is a description of the present rejected state of Israel and a prediction of their natural restoration in the latter days. <clears throat> Hot day today. Angry orchard. It doesn't taste too angry to me. It tastes kind of sweet. All right. But few of the predictions of this final restoration are given. To recite them all would be unwieldy. In Isaiah is a prediction of the destruction of the power under the name of the king of Babylon. Which event is evidently the same as the destruction of the mystical Babylon of the last days. Give me that stick. <laughs> I don't know if he's in shot. Oh, just, oh you're all covered with dust. I didn't bring any treats for you. Oh, give me that stick. <laughs> He's bringing me sticks for presents. It's the thought that counts. Really? Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm getting visits from everybody. My cat, who's brushing up and headbutting the tripod legs. <laughs> I'm sure you noticed that. And I got Otis and Abe. I got the whole gang here. He hasn't knocked my tripod down yet. He, he usually does that. At least once. So. Inasmuch as it is to be accomplished upon the mountains of Israel. Uh, verse 25. To prepare the way for this. We have the promised restoration of Israel. Verse 1. As immediately preparatory to the event. And therefore it must be its ultimate accomplishment. It must be in its ultimate accomplishment to be still future. Damn dog. It's messing with my tripod. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel 
and set them on their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. The strangers being joined unto Israel, restored to their own land, and what follows in the second and third verses were events which were not fulfilled when the Jews returned from ancient Babylon. What's going on with that? <laughs> Obviously some unfinished business, right? That's one way of looking at it. But are just such events as are promised to take place after the final restoration of Israel. You know, the, the last one, the final one. Okay. And the battle of that great day. The promised restoration is expressly applied to Israel. Judah and Israel had become two nations long before this prophecy. So once again, Big Sky Daddy's picking sides. The event is then clearly future. Because it sure is a failed prophecy. They don't have those. They have ones that you can twist around and interpret as having happened. And ones that, well, obviously they just haven't happened yet. But they will someday. Nice to know. Israel shall be again chosen and set in their own land. This restoration is a great event in the prophets. Yeah. And we find it in the New Testament. Paul, in his epistle to the Romans, notes their being again grafted into their own olive tree. As a notable event of the last days, which shall be the riches of the Gentiles. Yea. Life from the dead to them. See also some more Isaiah. Um, one passage more will I adduce from the writings of Moses in Deuteronomy. You know, the one where he writes about his own burial and, you know, demise and all that. And keeps giving us different names for Mount Sinai or Horeb or you know, all that. The long and doleful dispersion of this people had been predicted in the preceding chapters. Here their final restoration follows, and it shall come to pass. When all these things are come upon thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the, the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity, and have compassion upon thee. and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither I, the Lord thy God, have scattered thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above 
thy fathers. This has never yet been fulfilled. For the Jews returned from Babylon, were very far from being multiplied in their land above their fathers. This remains still to be accomplished. Okay, well, welcome back. Let's see you take a quick break. All right. Uh. Thus, the prophetic writings do clearly decide that both Israel and the Jews shall, in the last days, before the millennium, be literally restored to their own land in Palestine and be converted to the Christian faith. Hmm. All right, all of them? That's going to be a tough one. Whatever, though. Hmm. To give a mystical import to all these prophecies and say they will be fulfilled only in the conversion of these ancient people of God to Christianity is to take a most unwarrantably uh, yeah, uh, liberty with the word of God. That's all right. Just about everybody does. Some have made such uh, presence, but far be it from me to follow them. Why not as well apply a mystical, uh, mystical sense to every prediction of future events? To the predictions of the final, uh, of the battle of the... Two predictions of the battle of that great day of the millennium of the resurrections of the body of bodies of men of the final judgment of the conflagration of the world of heaven and of hell why may not those as well uh, all be fulfilled, not by a literal, but by some mystical accomplishment. Is not this to add and to diminish with a witness? Paul says, that's in 2 Timothy, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their words will eat as cloth a canker. Of whom uh, Hymenius and uh, Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, uh, saying that the resurrection resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. What was the liberty taken by those arch heretics? No doubt it was this. Applying two predictions of a resurrection of the bodies of men from the grave, a mystical resurrection. 
of the soul from the death of sin. Well, eh. but the predictions of the resurrection are far less numerous and are not more express than are the predictions of the restoration of the Jews in Israel to their own land. Well, you got to work with what you can get. Mmm, that's so nice. Various of the most remarkable of these predictions, we find it distinctly ascertained that the Jews shall be converted, shall have a new heart given them, and have their hearts circumcised to the fear of the Lord. Hmm, that's a lot to unpack right there. Let's see. Yeah, well, they got a new heart, but I mean, how about that neck problem? I hear they got a stiff neck. Didn't mention it. Uh, anyway, let's move on. And besides, and besides this, it is said that people shall, as a distinct nation, be restored to the land of their fathers and shall dwell in temporal prosperity there through all following ages and be more numerous than even were their fathers. To say then that all those predictions of such a restoration to Palestine are to be accomplished only in the bringing of that people in their uh, dispersed state to embrace the Messiah. To take a new unwarrantable liberty with the word of God. I thought he was doing that with all those parentheses he keeps adding into verses. <sighs> Look at one passage. Ezekiel 36, 37, 38, and 39 chapters. Read the whole book of Ezekiel. You should. It's kind of trippy. <sighs> Are the new heart the heart of flesh they're promised and God's gathering them out of the lands into their own land which has so long lain waste one and the same event what can such expositors do with the predictions of Gog and his bands and all the predictions of Joel, Zechariah, uh, and other prophets, etc., of the gathering of all nations of Jerusalem to be explained away so that no gathering of the nations and assembling of the kingdoms must be expected. It's like cheating, man. It must be a dangerous expedient, thus, to explain away the clear and express sentiments of revelation. The old and best expositors 
generally have believed in a literal restoration of Judah and Israel. And no material objections can be raised against it, which might not, in its principle, operate as forcibly against all prediction, predicted future events. <clears throat> that the Hebrews are to have a literal restoration appears from the fact that the threatenings that God cast him off had their fulfillment in a literal rejection of them from the promised land. The promises of their restoration appear to be an exact counterpart of this. And hence, must have their effect in restoring them again to Palestine. If such promises did not uh, design to restore them again to the land of their fathers, why should the threatenings of their rejection of God be designed to have their effect in expelling them literally from the land of promise. And yeah, it's all their fault. Why should one of them receive a literal and the other a mystical construction? I can't say I disagree but maybe so who knows people often have it both ways <sighs> no account can be given to of this if there is no benefit in restoring them to Palestine why was there any calamity in expelling them from Palestine Why did not God let them continue there, as he promised? But it was their fault. They made him angry. They upset him. Though he withdrew his spirit and grace from them, he just let them stay there. Like, all right, fine, you can have the land, but we're getting a divorce, God and me. No. He takes his ball and goes home. Actually, no, he kicks you out of yours. <sighs> but, if, over and above this, they must be expelled from the land of promise, Surely, their promised restoration must, over and above, given them the heart of flesh, which works so much better than the one of rock. Bring them back to Canaan, which was given to them for an everlasting possession. And that's the end of chapter 2. And discuss. That makes sense somehow, I'm told. So someone tell me how, <laughs> and I'll listen. All right, anyway, <laughs> moving right along. Let me know if you learn anything, and please share. Look out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having, and see you in chapter three. Oh.